Terra Water. Okay, so Terra Water for the Hydro... Uh, I figured it'd be Terra Water for the Hydro Pump, but... I actually haven't seen Terra, Terra Water Hydro Apple before, which is pretty cool. We go for an Ice Punch. No damage, as you would expect. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi Battle Session. Today, we're on our first battle versus Sunny from the Discord server in the underused tier. Looking at the team, they got a pretty solid one. They got the Grimmsnarl, the Typhlosion, Hydrapple, a little of Tails, Tauros, and a Galarian Weezing. That Tauros is going to be a threat, and so is the Typhlosion. Watch my words. Tauros hits incredibly hard. It's definitely going to be a tough one to break. I think they lead off with the um, Grimmsnarl. Which is definitely... Uh, so I'm thinking I'm going to lead off with Tinkton. And I'm going to encore them into whatever screen they decide to go for first. And then smack them in the face with a Gigaton Hammer, I think. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Sunny. So they're going to lead off with Weezing. As we obviously lead off with Tinkerton. Bam Bam over here. Now, I have took the custom shinies off. Um, because they just weren't doing it for me anymore. I'm just kind of getting annoyed with playing like a mod modded game. I don't know why. It's just, I don't know, something something to think about. Anyway, they definitely go for a Will-O-Wisp here or something along those lines. Either way, Skeledurge is the switch to go for against this thing. They might switch out themselves fearing a Gigaton Hammer, but if they do, their best Pokemon switch into is Hydrapple, which Skeledurge kind of deals with, and the Typhlosion, which again, Skeledurge kind of deals with. So let's go ahead and switch. Um, we go into our Dino Sutures, who can't be burned, and resist both stabs from this thing. They go for a Defog? Oh, they were expecting a Stealth Rocks. Okay, so they're going to go for the Defog, expecting the Stealth Rocks. Makes a lot of sense. Now, they could go into Typhlosion, expecting a Torch Song, but I think it's more likely they go into the Grimmsnarl right now. So, now I'm going to go for a... Um, I'm going to go for the Torch Song, because even if they bring the Typhlosion and get a Flash Fire Boost, we can still go for a Shadow Ball quite easily. So I'm not too worried about that, as they do switch out. Are they going to go Typhlosion? They do go Typhlosion. So maybe I should have Shadow Ball there, but it's nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. We go for the Torch Song. Gets them a Flash Fire Boost. Again, not too worried about this. Um, they may Terra here. So I'm leaning towards switching out. Um, I don't really have the best switch in, though. I'm going to go for a Shadow Ball just to get as much damage off as possible. They go for a Shadow Ball of their own. If their choice specs, this is deadly. That does over half, which is unfortunate. Now, normally Typhlosion is choiced in some way. So if we play under that assumption, as our Shadow Ball does the exact same amount of damage, which is really cool. So if we play under the assumption that they are choice locked into Shadow Ball right now, we should switch out. And I'm leaning towards Cyclozar. So I'm going to go Cyclozar right now. And if they switch up and go for a fire move expecting something else and they aren't choiced, they switch out themselves. What are they going to go into? Tauros. So Tauros is a very interesting one. It's nice and shiny, gotta love it. I actually don't mind Tauros' as green shiny. I notoriously hate green shinies, but some Pokemon like Tauros, I actually think it looks pretty cool. It's like it's a moldy, it's a moldy bull, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So anyway, if we assume they're going to predict us to switch out into Chestnut or something, we should see in and drop a Draco on this thing, which is what I'm going to do. I don't think they go for an attacking, I think they go for an attacking move, but I don't think it'll KO us, as we nearly KO them with a Draco Meteor, which is fantastic. They go for a Raging Bull, though, which is going to get a crit and KO us, so that's unfortunate. We lose our Hazard Clearer, but they don't really have a Hazard Setter on their team. And Raging Bull isn't boosted by Sheer Force, which means they're going to get some Life Orb damage. So it's not the worst scenario to be in. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Tinker Tom. I'm going to go Tinker Tom because this bull is on its last leg, so we're going to be able to easily get a KO on it, which is great. I say easily. And um, we're still going to take some damage from some sort of move. Um, but we, we can't get take damage from Earthquake, which is the main thing. So, if we assume they're going to go ahead and attack us, we should go for a knockoff. I'm going to knock off. Um, we might be able to catch the Typhlosion on the switch, and if we do. Um, but I want to get Stealth Rocks at some point. So, they go for another Raging Ball to break our Air Balloon. Doesn't do much damage, um, which is unfortunate because I, I, I was expecting them to go for something else. Maybe like a Fire Blast, because sometimes Taurus is running mixed. So I wasn't expecting them to go down to the life orb. I was expecting them to preserve it for a bit longer because it's such a hard-hitting mon. Um, so our knockoff failed. I could have gone for the Stealth Rocks there, but I didn't want to risk it because if they go for a Fire Blast and it too, it KOs me, then we're kind of screwed. Grimmsnarl comes in. What's Grimmsnarl going to do? Probably set up a screen, right? A screen or two? So in theory, I should go for an Encore here. I think I will go for an Encore. They go for a Thunder Wave, which is going to paralyze us, obviously. Um, but we can Encore them into it. As long as we don't get fully paralyzed here, we should be alright. Watch we'll us get fully paralyzed. 
We go for an encore. Great. So we got the encore off on the Grim Snarl, which is always nice. Always nice. And then we just go straight for a Stealth Frog now. Because they have to switch out. They don't want to get hit by a Gigaton Hammer, that's for sure. So they withdraw the Grimmsnarl. And the great thing is, other than that Typhlosion and the Hydrapple, Tinkerton does wonders against their team. So they're going to bring in the Hydrapple, which is fair enough. Let's see if we can get the Stealth Frogs up. We couldn't move because we were fully paralyzed. So that's really unfortunate. That's the only thing that's going to hold us back this game with Tinkerton is the fact that we can't go for the moves we want to go for. Um, so what do we do here against this Hydrapple? I'm leaning toward, that, um, toward Skeledurge. Um, this is probably going to be a sack play because they more than likely go for Earth Power, but I don't want to risk the Chestnut because A, Chestnut can't touch this thing in return, and B, I just don't. I just, I, I just don't. I want to get a free switch in with something. They go for a Hydro Pump. That's going to definitely take us out, um, as you'd expect. So what we can do now is we could Terra our Feraligator. That's one, one way we could do it. Or... We could not terror it and just go for an Ice Punch. So I'm going to switch into Froligator now anyway. They probably expect a Dragon Ants or something, so they probably stay in. I'm going to go straight for the Ice Punch. I'm going to go straight for the kill on the Hydrapple. They do terror! No! What are they going to terror into, though? That's the real question. Is it going to be Terror Water? Terror Water. Okay, so Terror Water for the Hydro... Uh, I figured it'd be Terror Water for the Hydro Pump, but... I actually haven't seen Terror, terror Water Hydrapple before, which is pretty cool. We go for an Ice Punch, no damage as you would expect, no chance of freeze like someone said in one of the old videos, and they go for a Giga Drain to take us out, so that Hydra Apple is now 100 billion percent a mahusive threat, but they have used the Terra now, which is something, and like I said, Tinkerton actually helps against their team a lot, so now that the Terra Water, we could scare them out with Chestnut, and make them go into the Typhlosion or the Alola Ninetales, which means we could go for a Leech Seed, um, but I'm not going to bank on that too much. I think my best bet is Vika Volt, so that's exactly what I'm going to go into. So we go Vika Volt, we scare them out. They have to switch out here, right? So we go for a Volt Switch, correct? Or do we go for a Sticky Web? I think I'm going to go straight for the KO, because this Hydra Apple is causing too much, too, much, too much damage to our team, really. So they are going to withdraw the Hydra Apple, which means we get a free switch in on whatever they switch in, as they go into Ninetales. Now, how's Ninetales going to take this Volt Switch, I wonder? Nice and shiny as well. I love shiny Ninetales. It's the purple like tint to it. It's really nice. Um, so we go for a Volt Switch. Get on out of there. Does over half, which is fantastic. And then we go straight into Tinkerton, right? We definitely go straight into Tinkerton. We've still preserved our Focus Sash, so we can use our Vika Volt later if we need to against something. I still think we can pull this back, though. It's currently a 5-3 situation. I think we can pull it back. Um, definitely want to go for a knockoff uh, or a, a Gigaton Hammer or a Stealth Rocks. I think I will go for the Stealth Rock playing because they more than likely go for an Aurora Veil, as I was about to say. So we go for a Stealth Rocks. Hopefully we're not fully paralyzed. If we are, that's unfortunate. We don't. Stealth Rocks are up now, which is fantastic. That's going to hurt the Typhlosion, the Ninetales, all sorts. So now I go straight for a Gigaton Hammer. They go for a Blizzard. They're not bothered about it going down, which is fair enough. Hopefully we don't get fully paralyzed. We don't. Gigaton Hammer comes through. Through Aurora Veil, it still takes out the Ninetales, which is fantastic. So Ninetales goes down. So we're closing the gap a little bit. You know, we were playing really well at first, and then they've just kind of got the edge on us a little bit. But I think we can still maybe pull this back. Typhlosion comes in. So this thing is a threat in its own right. They definitely go for a Flamethrower or something along those lines. But Stealth Rocks are going to dig in. Now, do we need Terra for anything else? I don't think we do. We definitely don't. So I'm going to Terra Ghost, and I'm going to go for a knockoff right now. And I'm hoping and praying that we can live a flamethrower. And I'm hoping and praying we don't get fully paralyzed right now as we go for a knockoff. Because if we do, that is extremely unfortunate for us. Extremely unfortunate for us, but it is what it is. So if we do get fully paralyzed, so be it. There you go for an overheat. This could KO us. But it doesn't because Tinkerton is a bulky monster and we are neutral. Um, but we get to go for a knockoff now and take out... It lived? I know it had, like, Aurora Veil, but... Really? It lived? Huh. That's really unfortunate. Let's go for a knockoff again. But at least they... Oh, they, they go for a Shadow Ball. So there we go. So they were Charcoal, which is an interesting move. So I'm guessing they do with Charcoal to bluff the choice. Um, that's my guess. So Ty Typhlosion does take us out. But I'm not too worried because they have lowered special attack... And we have Chestnut in the back that's just chilling there waiting to come in. So the snow is going to stop. However, the Aurora Veil is still there. Now, Chestnut is definitely our best option here. Definitely our best option because Body Press is going to do a lot of damage to the whole team. 
not really, they're high grapple, but um, the only thing we've got to worry about is critical hits on the overheat. That's what we've got to worry about. So I'm going to go for the body press now. They do go for a flamethrower to get as much damage as possible off. It's only going to do about half. And it does burn us, which is really unfortunate because burn halves the power of your, your physical moves. Um, it's not your attack stat that gets halved. It's your move-based power that gets halved, which means even though body press is based on your defense, it's still affected by burn because it goes from 80 base power to 40 base power, which is really unfortunate. In comes Weezing. So Weezing is obviously a threat right now to this team. And we can't really do anything to Weezing. They can do plenty to us, though. So I'm going to go for a... I want to go for Spikes or Leech Seed. I'm going to go for a Leech Seed. Go for the Leech Seed just to get some health back and to whittle their health down as much as possible because Body Press definitely isn't going to cut it against the Weezing. They go for a Defog. I knew they were going to go for a Defog. I just knew it. I knew it. It doesn't matter too much now that the Typhlosion and the Ninetales are gone. But... Defog doesn't get rid of Leech Seed, I don't think. It doesn't, no. That's great, because Rapid Spin gets rid of the Leech Seed, but Defog obviously doesn't in this situation. So we're going to get some health back. I'm pretty confident in Chestnut right now that he can do some work. Um, so what I'm going to do is, expecting them to attack us, I am going to go for a Body Press. I'm just going to go for as much damage as I can against this Weezing. I know Body Press does is really just 1 HP, and they go for a Curse. They're a Curse Weezing with Defog. Curse Weezing? That is interesting. So that is unfortunate that they go for that. But Leech Seed is sapping away their HP every turn. And we are a physically defensive Pokemon. So we should be able to take a hit from this Weezing, no problem. If only I had a Terra still, I could have Terra Steeled. But I kind of needed that Terra against the Typhlosion, right? So I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't have Terra'd. Maybe we shouldn't have Terra'd. <laughs> we probably shouldn't have Terra'd. We should have let Tankaton go down. Um, let's go for a body press once again. I don't see any reason not to. We just keep whittling away its health little by little. Little by little. They go for a sludge bomb, but that doesn't affect old Juggernog over here. And um, if that's their only attacking move, then we are actually in a bit of a good situation. Because I'm assuming they have strange steam, but they may not. They may not. So we're going to get our health back. This is, if they've only got Sludge Bomb as their attacking move, then we are at a stalemate right now. Because obviously we can't touch them. But at least their Aura Veils wore off. So let's go for a Body Press once again. Get some chip damage off. They have stayed in, so they must have another attacking move of some kind. They go for a Play Rough, boosted by Curse, and that's going to take us out. But we do get some Rocky Helmet chip. There's a crit as well. There's a crit. They get some Rocky Helmet chip, which is always nice. Which means now, with the Aurora Veil gone, and Vika Volt still in check, and they gone for a Curse... Do you know what that means? It means Vika Volt outspeeds. So Vika Volt could pull this back for us. Could easily pull this back for us. Not easily, but easily, if that makes sense. So anyway, Sticky Webs, um, not Sticky Webs. Vika Volt's going to come in. We go for a Volt Switch. We can freely go for this now because it won't switch us out. And we take out the Weezing. We take out that Weezing. So what's the Grim Snarl going to do? Because if the Aurora Veil from the Ninetales, I'm assuming they don't have screens on the Grim Snarl. I'm just assuming, but we could be right. Grimmsnarl comes in. Is it going to be an offensive variant? If it is, then we're kind of boned. We can still pull this back, though. Vika Volt's actually going to put in the work right now. They go for a light screen. So Bug Buzz isn't going to hurt them that much because of the light screen. But at the same time, it's still going to sting a little bit. Because there we go. They don't need to self-reflect either. They could just go for whatever they want this next turn. So what would they go for? Would they go for a Hydrapple Switch? If they don't have an attacking moves on this Grimmsnarl, they do. They have Spirit Break. Spirit Break, if I remember rightly, lowers your special attack. It does. Okay, so that's unfortunate. So I think Vika Volt, unless it gets a crit here, or at all, is in a bit of a pickle. So that's a light leftover Grim Style as well. It's not like Clay. So they have Spirit Break. They probably have Reflect as well with Thunder Wave. So all they can do is Spirit Break. So let's go for a Bug Buzz again. There you go for another Spirit Break. Nearly takes us out. Lowers our special attack. Unless we can get a crit right now. Which I don't think we are. No, we're not. <laughs> Vikavon could have pulled that back if it wasn't for this pesky Grimmsnarl. That's for sure. So that's going to be the game, I think, pretty much. Let's see, just see if we get a Bug Buzz crit. See if we live the spirit breaking out of Bug Buzz crit. No, we don't. No, we don't. So that's going to be the game. So GG, Sunny. That was a really fun one. I enjoyed that one. So we started with a loss, but hopefully in the next one, in this same video, so don't tune away now, we're going to get a W. 
And the second battle is here. We're going against OD from the Discord server in the underused tier again. And they have a pretty solid looking team. Magnazone, Pelipper, Kingdra, a Lolan Exeggutor, which is really good to see. Chandelure and an Iron Juggler. It's pretty cool stuff. Really like it. So I'm looking at the team. I'm not seeing a Hazard Clearer. So I think Sticky Webs are going to be very useful. Especially if the Chandelure is um, Choice Scarf, for example. Or the Magnazone is Choice Scarf. And then the Kingdra, obviously, with its Swift Swim. Got to make sure we're prepared for that. So, I think we leave with Vikavolt. We get the Sticky Webs up straight away thanks to our Focus Sash. And they don't have any Pokemon with multi-hitting moves. By the looks of it, unless it's Scale Shot Kingdra. I doubt it. Um, so, there we go from there. And I think Froligator has a potential to do some real work here. Um, we just have to make sure we scout for the Terrors and all that stuff. So, let's go. And the battle begins. Good luck. Have fun, OD. So, they're going to lead it off with Pelipper, which is to be expected. It's a rain team after all. Well, it's a semi-rain team. Um, we lead off with a Vika Vault, so right off the bat we're off to a good start and um, we could go straight for a Vault Switch and take this thing out if we really wanted to They have no ground types after all, so um, we could do that, but I really want to get those sticky webs up So that's what I'm gonna do. They go for a Tailwind So that Kingdra in the rain is gonna be very fast Very f very very fast very fast. I stumbled over my own words then anyway We get the sticky webs up, which is always nice and powerful Let's go for a Volt Switch right off the bat because they more than likely, they stay in and attack with a Weather Ball. They clearly see this Vicovolt as a threat because they're going for all the damage. We go for a Volt Switch though and that cleanly nearly takes out the Pelipper but they do have a Focus Sash. So that's interesting. Wasn't expecting a Focus Sash on the uh, Pelipper to be honest with you but it is what it is. The Pelipper's still around so like it's kind of worked out for them. Now I want to get Stealth Rocks up. So I'm going to go into Tink Tom. Definitely want to get Stealth Rocks up. I think they're going to be really useful. So we'll bring Tinkton in real quick. Nice and shiny. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. So let's go for a Stealth Rock real quick. Um, now, Stealth Rock comes through. Let's go. They go for another Weather Ball. They actually have Speed us, so they have Speed Investment, which is interesting. A Tinkton does take about 50% from that. That's unfortunate. Um, so we go for a Stealth Rock. This Pelipper may actually take out Tinkton right now. I suppose I could be like good and uh, switch and uh, Froligator or something. Oh, no, they have Tailwind up. That's why I outsped. That's why I outsped. Okay, never mind. Ignore me. Ignore me. I'm talking rubbish. So, I don't want Tinkton to go down because that's going to be useful for the Alolan Executor, resisting both its stabs. I think I sack off Vikavolt here. So, I'm going to go ahead and sack off Vikavolt. We got the Stealth Frogs up. We got the Sticky Webs up. There's no Spinner on their team, unless they have a Defogmon that I don't know about, but I don't think they do. Um, so, we're just going to Vika Vault to sack it off as they go for another Weather Ball, which is obviously going to take out a Vika Vault. So, that's unfortunate that we lose Vika Vault there, but at the same time, it wasn't doing much for the team other than, you know, set up Sticky Web. So, it's not a big deal. Um, as now the Tailwind has petted out, we can go into whatever we want, wherever we want. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring Cyclodar in. I feel like they preserved the Pelipper by switching out. Um, I feel like they preserved the Pelipper by switching out, that's that's for sure. But I'm going to go for a knockoff anyway. And they do stay in and let the Pelipper go down. So they obviously don't really care too much about the rain. They didn't have Damp Rock. They don't have Focus Sash. No idea what was going on. But that Pelipper put, it put some holes in my team. Let's just say that. Tinkton's at 50% and Vikavolt is gone thanks to that Pelipper. So you know what it is? In comes Angie Tree, the Furious. That's going to be the Executor. Nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. It's so big. So tall, uh, the speed is going to drop and the Stealth Rocks dig in. Now, I don't know whether this thing is going to terror or not. Don't really want to stay in and find out. So I'm going to go for a U-turn real quick. They don't terror. I could have dropped a Draco there. But I didn't want to drop a Draco if they were going to terror, you know. So that's interesting that they played like that. So let's go into Tinkton, who can definitely take any hit from this thing. If they go for a Fire Blast predicting the Tinkton, then so be it. But I don't think they will. I think they go for a Draco or Dragon Pulse or something along those lines. So let's just see. They go for a Draco. Not going to work on Tinkerton, I'm afraid, being a fairy type, which is fantastic. Now all we do is slap this thing in the face with a Gigaton Hammer. Like so. They are going to Terror this time. What type are they going to Terror into? Is it going to be Fire? I'm predicting Fire. I predict a Fire. Fire, yes. Okay, so Fire is interesting. So they probably have Terror Blast and they're probably going to take out my Tinkerton right now. But it's fine because now this thing's weak to Feraligator. We go for the Gigaton Hammer. I should have gone for the Encore, really. Encore would have been the better play there. I know someone's going to rinse me in the comments for that. You should have gone for the Encore and the Executor. It would have locked it into Draco Meteor. <laughs> but now they get a sunny day up. And now they have the Chlorophyll boost. Which is not very good. Oh, no, they have Harvest. Interesting. So no Chlorophyll, just Harvest. Um, let's go for a knockoff. 
If we knock off their berry, it shouldn't harvest, I think. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. So let's see how that works. Let's see how it plays out. So they go for a flamethrower. I forgot that thing got flamethrower, to be honest with you. And that easily takes out Tinkerton. Let's see if the uh, harvest actually plays in with knockoff. Let us see if it plays in with knockoff. I don't think it does. No, it looks like it hasn't. So what do we do here? I'd say for alligator into liquidation. Should still take this thing out. I think I will go with the for alligator liquidation play. I think that is the best play to go for. Because to be honest with you, um, they have some weird sets, but they are actually putting in working right now. So let's go for a liquidation real quick. There's no reason not to. It should still take out the Alolan Executor as it does, which is fantastic. Fantabulous. Down goes the big ass tree. There we go. In comes Chandelure the Reluctant. This thing is going to go for an Energy Ball or a Shadow Ball. One of the two. So I'm going to go straight into Cyclazar, resisting, well, being immune to Shadow Ball and resisting the Energy Ball as well. Seems like the perfect switch. And then we can go for a knockoff. So we'll do that. They haven't got Hazards on the team anymore uh, or at all. Um, so we don't have to worry about that too much. They go for the Energy Ball, though. That's going to do diddly squat to us. And then we can just go straight for a knockoff real quick, which is going to be amazing. So knockoff comes through. We're going to knock off whatever item they had. Hopefully it's a choice item. Heavy Dewy Boots. Okay, yeah, I should have known that, by the way. They didn't take any damage um, from the likes of Self Rocks or Sticky Webs. So that's, I should have noticed that. Let's go for a knockoff again and take out this Chandelure real quick. They definitely don't want any of their other Pokemon's items being knocked off, which I'm assuming is why they didn't switch out there. Um, but it is what it is. So it looks like this is going to be a nice and quick battle. But who it's gonna, who's going to win is completely it's completely up to them. Because uh, if they go into Magnezone, I can't touch Magnezone because of the fact that we haven't got Overheat on this particular Cyclozar. So what I'm going to do instead is, knowing that they are potentially choice or something along those lines, I should stay in and go for a knockoff. But I'm not. I'm going to go into Chestnut. The reason being is because Cyclozar is going to be key to taking out that Kingdra. Definitely going to be key to taking out that Kingdra, that's for sure. So let's go into Juggernaug real quick. The uh, Chestnut, there we go. There you go for a Flash Cannon. It's going to sting a bit. No doubt. Oh, wow. It stung way more than I thought it would. It's Life Orb. Life Orb. Okay, so we go for a Body Press now. I would Terra, but they actually switch out, which is interesting. So they must be thinking we might be faster and we might be wanting to go for a Close Combat or a Drain Punch or something. They go into Iron Jugglers. A perfect switch in, if I don't say so myself. It's going to get some Stealth Frog Chip, and the Body Press is going to hurt, but they do get that Booster Energy in its, I'm assuming, Speed? Speed, yes. So Speed is going to come through for them. We go for a Body Press, though. That's going to do a lot of damage. And then what I can do is, because, I don't know, there's no point Spiky Shielding. I go for another Body Press just in case. They go for a Flamethrower, and when I say just in case, I mean just in case they went for a Hurricane. Because if they went for a Hurricane, chance that, there's a chance they can miss, you know? So that's, that's, that's that. So um, what can we do here? So Iron Jugglers is in, hits really hard, it's got booster energy and speed. We kind of have to go into for Alligator at this point, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. And we can't set up Dragon Ants because they will start out speed as thanks to their booster energy. So I'm just going to go straight for the Liquidation, just in case they bring the Magnezone in. But they don't, they go straight for a Dark Pulse, does about half. We go for a Liquidation and down goes the Iron Jugglers, which is fantastic. So we have two Pokemon to deal with now, Kingdra and Magnezone. Let's see how that plays out. Kingdra comes in, so we cannot one-shot Kingdra, and they could easily drop a Draco, or even go for a Dragon Dance right now. They don't have speed us because of the sticky webs, and we do get some chip, which is always nice. So what I'm going to do here is, I am going to go straight for, it's Crunch tries. Crunch is the better option, because it's uh, they're both boosted by Sheer Force. Someone mentioned about Ice Punch potentially freezing in the, in the last video. It can't because Sheer Force stops that. They go for a Dragon Pulse, though. That's going to definitely take us out. Yep, down goes for Alligator, unfortunately, to the Kingdra's Dragon Pulse. But it's fine, because we still have the Psychazar in the back. And now we also have the Skeledurge in the back for the Magnezone. So it's looking like it's going to be pretty close game, because there's no guarantee our Torchstone can take out the Magnezone. So I'm going to go for the Draco now. They withdraw the Kingdra and they're going to go into the Magnezone. That makes a lot of sense. It's the, probably the best play they could go for, really. So Magnezone comes through like so. And then uh, they get caught in the sticky webs. But it's fine because we can still win this with Skeledurge, to be honest with you. We can still win this with Skeledurge. So let's see how this plays out. We go for a Draco. Decent bit of chip damage on the Magnezone, not going to lie. Uh, it's a lot more damage than I thought it would do. 
So let's go for a knockoff now. Get this thing. Get rid of this thing's life orb because we can't switch Skeledurge in because no doubt they're going to predict the Skeledurge switch and go for a Thunderbolt. Two shotting us in the process, maybe. So let's go for a knockoff first. Get rid of that life orb that they had. There we go. They go for a flash cannon. So they didn't predict the Skeletor switch. They went straight for the flash cannon. It's fine. Take out the cyclers art. It's all good. So basically, they have um, sticky webs. So we are faster than them with our Skeletor, which is what I'm kind of going for here. And we haven't terrored yet. So we can still terror. We can still terror. And that's exactly what I'm not going to do this turn because they may go for a flash cannon. I'm going to go for a torch song now. Torch song comes through. Should take out the Magnazone as it does, which is great. Gives us a nice special attack boost. And then what we'll do is the next turn we'll go for a... Because I'm not confident a plus one Shadow Ball takes out Kingdra. I am not confident in that at all. So I'm going to go for the Terra Fairy Alluring Voice. And that should finish off the Kingdra, I believe. So let's see how this plays out. So Speed is going to drop. Stealth Frog is going to dig in. I'm pretty sure Shadow Ball does kill because I forgot that I had lost some health. But I'm going to go for the Terra Fairy Alluring Voice anyway. Because we haven't terrored this game. And if we're going to finish him off... We may as well finish them off in style. And also because there is still the chance that they do outspeed us after Sticky Webs. And I don't want them to take me out of a Hydro Pump. Because that would be terrible. So we'll Terra Fairy like this. Like so. They go. They don't outspeed us, which is great. We go for an Alluring Voice. And we finish off the Kingdra with style. And that is going to be the game. So GG Ultimoti. That was a pretty awesome game. I really enjoyed that one. It was nice and close as well. Some questionable plays. Some questionable sets. Um, the Pelipper set was very interesting, I will say that. Um, but that's just that's just the game we play, and I think that's what keeps, uh, keeps the game fresh for me. People bringing unique sets and stuff like that. It was a really fun game, I enjoyed that one. But anyway, here is the team. Try it out if you want to use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, of course, leave a like, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.